Good morning, everybody. And today we're going to start the second installation in our dehydration series. Today we're going to do ground beef. Uh, it's a staple of all my trail meals, um, from chili, pasta with beef, uh, beef stroganoff, uh, beef stew, a trail burrito, quite a bit, just about you know 90% of everything that I make out in the field. It's a great source of protein, it stores and packs, it's practically weightless, and it's quite delicious. If it's done well, it dehydrates well, it rehydrates very, very well. When it comes to dehydration and making dehydrated trail meals, there are two general philosophies that people follow. The first one being, I'm going to make a nice chili like I did the other day in the Dutch oven. And then I'm going to take that chili and I'm going to spread it out on my dehydrator and I'm going to dehydrate it so that when I go out in the field I can just add water and it'll come back and it'll be good. Now, that's a good theory. It does work. It just doesn't work perfectly. The problem that you run into is that the beef and the proteins want to be dehydrated at 160 degrees and uh, the, the carbs like the vegetables, they want to be at fruits, they want to be dehydrated at a lower temperature, 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so by mixing them together, you're basically you're going to have to overcook the vegetables in order to get the meat perfectly dehydrated or else you're going to be un under dehydrating the beef, which could be dangerous. So uh, my philosophy with dehydration is in most cases, uh, not all, but in most cases, I'm going to dehydrate the beef. I'm going to dehydrate the vegetables and I'm going to dehydrate the carbs uh, separately. In most cases, the carbs are going to be either powdered potatoes or rice, um, which I'll usually use the instant minute rice, works fantastically out in the field, just have to add water. There's a bunch of others that you can use, but you, know, you got the idea. What I'm going to do is I'll cook pasta, usually the elbows work best, and then I'll dehydrate those. I will make a sauce and I will dehydrate that as a fruit leather or a roll up they call it. I'm going to do a whole video on doing fruit leathers as well, as well as putting together some of these meals, but just kind of to get the whole thing started so you know where I'm going. Uh, I'm not just going to be rehydrating a plate full of ground beef. It's going to be part of a larger meal. Usually I'll be adding, like I said, a, a carb, a protein, some gravy, uh, usually some veg and all that kind of thing and get that all together. And I'll make that just before I go out into the field because these things are gonna, they'll store better in a sealed container and some things don't want to be mixed with others. So it's better to, I keep these things separate until the day before I leave for a trip, then I prep all my meals, pack them up real nice. You put all the extras in there, the dairy substitutes, uh, you know, anything that's gonna be semi-perishable cheeses and whatnot that you want to use. I like Pecorino Romano cheese on most of my dishes. So I like to bring a little bag of that along. That'll keep for a couple of days in a backpack, no problem. But it won't keep for three months in a dehydrated dish. That's the other problem. You can't dehydrate fats, so you have to you, know, you have to make some sacrifices to keep the food fresh. Uh, all right, so that, that's the general idea. I think I over talked it a little bit, so I'll probably trim it down a bit. But generally speaking, I I, I follow the second rule uh, where I'm going to be making everything separately. So far, you've seen me dehydrate fresh fruits. That's a lot of fun. That's a great way to preserve you know your extra vegetables. This is what I have left from. Uh, the, the, the fruits that I, I dehydrated on the last uh, the last video. So today, basically, with the with the proteins, with gravel, we call it sometimes um, you know, dehydrated ground beef. You have to get the highest quality beef that you can get. I think 90% lean is always a good way to, to start. As lean as you can get. I mean, really, you, you're, you're going to be removing the fat anyway. So um, I usually do about two, two and a half pounds in a batch. That gives me a nice mason jar full, a quart sized mason jar full of gravel, and that'll get me through till next spring for the most part. Unless I do a lot of hiking, and that's a great world, and I guess I'll have to go buy some dehydrated food. Well, I hope that happens, huh? But usually twice, maybe three times a year, I'll do a dehydration run like this and, and stock up. The fruit I'll do more spontaneously when, like I said, when you run into you know, a whole big batch of fruit during the holidays or a friend or harvest time when you go upstate and come home with a whole bushel full of apples. Uh, so, you know, strawberry picking, peach picking, that kind of thing. All right, I think I've gone over the basics. Right now I'm sanitizing all my dehydrator parts in a tub. I've got a big plastic tub full of water and a little bit of a bleach solution in there that I usually use. I like to do that, especially on the meat dehydration. I wash these parts after I use them every time and put them away. But you know, dust gathers, this is food product and it's also being dehydrated. So it's extra susceptible to bacteria and stuff. So 
Um, every time that I use it, I put it into the tub full of a little bit of a bleach solution and let it sit for a couple hours, make sure that everything is safe. And uh, I will go and rinse all that off and I'm gonna stack it up right here. And then I can start prepping the beef. We'll be right back. And thank you for tuning in today. I do appreciate you watching these videos. It's a, it's a lot of fun to know that, that there are people that I know out there watching these now. Uh, if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. If you're not, please consider subscribing. If you like the content, you want to see me continue to uh, make these kind of videos. When the weather gets a little better, when I get more time to break away, I'll be doing more hiking and camping, that kind of thing. But for now, I'm going to build up this dehydration playlist it gives me something to do in the, the cold dark winter months food's important this time of year so and this is a big part of my hiking and camping and exploring is if i don't have dehydrated food it's just not as much fun i can go out and buy store-bought stuff don't get me wrong it's just not as healthy i don't know what's in it you now when you dehydrate your own meals and put them together you know they may have be high in you know in calories and fat but at least you know that it's safe it's got no chemicals in it it's got no odd preservatives you know, these manufacturers don't tell you everything that they put in there. I'm not too worried about it, but there, that's not the only reason. It's a monetary thing. If you save some money doing it yourself, I get exactly the portion and the meal that I want. I can gauge the size of the meal based on my activity. If I'm going to be doing some heavy climbing or exceptionally long hike, or I'm going to do some heavy maintenance on a trail or something, I'll make my meals a little heavier because I know I'm going to be burning the calories. If I know it's just going to be a light day hanging out down by the shore or doing a little fishing, you know, I'll make a smaller portion. There's just no sense being a hog and wasting hate to waste. If I do anything, I'll bring along an extra serving just in case you run into someone on the trail that needs a meal. It's another good thing that you can do with it. Dehydrated foods are not only meant for the trail, they can be used in your regular cooking all the time. Any baker will tell you that dehydrated fruits uh, are far superior to fresh fruits in most baking applications because they don't add a lot of moisture to the recipes. Uh, if you like making soups on your way out the door, you can grab a, a couple of handfuls of veg, a couple of handfuls of dehydrated protein or meats, and a pack of pasta, you throw it into a bag, and within five minutes, you've got a meal ready to take out. This is the common item that I use for any activity, is gonna be food. All right, again, my thanks for showing up, everybody. I do appreciate your support more than I can express. Uh, and again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. Um, hit the bell so I can notify you when the next video comes up. All right, I took all the trays out of the, the soaking tub that I had them in a sanitizing solution. I gave them a rinse off, brought them out here. They're all stacked up, clean and ready to go. All right, I've got three and a half pounds of ground beef, 90%, very good quality. It's a little more than I usually do, so these will probably be very full before we're done. Uh, that's okay. I'd rather have more, have a little extra than, than not enough. All right, I'm gonna fry this up on the stove top using a non-stick pan. I'm sorry to say it's been pretty well beat up over the years as I've been using it for this. I try to be careful, but it just gets a beaten. It's a good pan though. Believe it or not, it's that Pioneer Woman, very pretty pan. I got the whole set of them up on the wall. They're very, very useful. This one gets most of the use because it's just the size, nice and big. So I'm gonna take this over to the stove top and we're gonna get this all broken up, uh, browned, and then we're gonna get every little bit of grease out of it. That is the big trick to doing dehydration of ground beef, is every little bit of the 10% of fat that's left in this package of meat got to be out of there before I'm done. So I'm going to brown this, I'm going to drain the fat, and then I'm actually going to wash the fat out with hot water. I know it seems extreme, but it works and it's just fun. It gets all the grease out. That's where I get in trouble. I'm always scraping the pan on the stove top all the time. I'm so used to using my big old nasty cast iron that uh, I'm afraid I'm the I'm the culprit that destroyed it. I'm gonna have to see if I can replace it and be nicer to it next time. It's a great pan, don't get me wrong. It lasted quite a while, even with my destructive habits. So I guess I can't complain, can I? This one burner's got this super boil feature that I don't want to use. It's too much. You use that super boil on this kind of a pan, it'll destroy it. The meat is thoroughly defrosted already. 90% lean ground beef. 3.61 pounds, three and a half pounds. So we should have 14 servings 
of ground beef. It's always good to make notice. It's about a quarter pound per serving is a pretty fair size serving uh, to go by. At least it's a good starting point. I think it works out. There's something in the ballpark of 50 grams uh, when I measure them out later, but we'll get into that when I actually make the the uh, entree tapes, the, uh, the recipes, which is probably the most important part. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is, is monotonous. You just have to go through the paces just so you have them. I'm creating the basics, you know, creating the paints before making the painting. Um, that's, you need paint. So, again, I got the heat on. No fat, did you notice? I didn't put any oil in this pan. I would just have to remove it later anyway, so there's enough fat in this meat, and this is a non-stick pan. I'm not worried about it sticking. I know it works great. I'll probably speed this up at this point just so we can get through this. I don't want to waste a lot of time with this kind of prep. This video shouldn't be too long. Okay, one's just broken up. It'll start to brown. In the meantime, I'll get the dehydrator all set up. I'll bring you back when this is done. Alrighty then, it is browning pretty good. Give it a little bit of a turn. Sorry about that. I'm heating up my lunch. It's starting to brown nicely. Keep on chopping it up. You want it to be as fine as you can. It also helps to release the fat, let them render. The more area hitting the pan. You're not in a rush here. You don't want a lot of heat. You want slow, steady progress. Some people like to season a little bit now. I prefer not to. It could add to the preservation, but I'm, I'm, I'd rather put my seasoning in as I prepare each meal. Continue browning. Okay, we're almost done. One more turn. Should do it. Yeah, it's getting all brown in the bottom. You don't need to cook the hell out of it, really, because technically speaking, it's going to go on the dehydrator at 160 degrees for probably at least five or six hours, maybe even more. It's not the driest of days for dehydrating, so. But it will cook further. One thing about dehydrated meat, you know it's fully cooked. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off on this and we will call it done. Just gonna let it cool down a little bit before I take the next step. Just a little. Get the water ripping hot. Ground beef is all brown. Ready to go. That light. Right, it's all ready to go. Beautiful. Just gonna pour it right into the sieve, a strainer. And get rid of all the fat. I'm also going to give the pan a quick rinse right now to get all the fat out of there. And I'm going to wipe that out with paper towel. Now that the water is just about boiling hot, we want to get the rest of the fat out of this meat. Now well, I give it a good cleaning. We get all the fat out. You can see it in the bottom of the sink, it's coming out. My dog's sitting here licking her chops. She wants me to let her get up here, but that's disgusting. Give it a little stir about. Make sure we get all of that out. Just keeping that protein. Now when we go to prepare the meals later, I'll be adding fat back. I always travel with a little vial of olive oil or butter in my pack or Crisco, depending on the time of year. So there's always some sort of fat that I can put back into this dish as it rehydrates, technically after it rehydrates. Okay, now that is beautiful. All protein, very little if not zero fat. The way you check, and I'll, my hands are impeccably clean right now, I assure you. But I, you pick up some of the beef, kind of give it a little squish around, and then feel your fingers. They shouldn't feel slippery, greasy. You know, There's a little bit in here, so I think I should wash just a little bit further. What's the matter, dog? We want to make sure that it's completely fat-free. Yeah, my fingers might have been a little greasy. 
from uh, rinsing out the pan. I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse. Whew, that water is hot. Nice and dry. Let's try this again. Oh, that feels much better. Yeah, friction in my fingers. I'm not feeling anything slippery. All the fat is out. We just need to get all the water out of there. And we are gonna move over to the dehydrator, which is all sanitized and it's set up with its trays. I had to cut a couple of pieces of parchment paper because I figure I'm gonna use all 10 of my trays and I've only got eight liners, you know, the plastic liners. I'll show you as I assemble it. Okay, let's move over. Okay, these are the base for the dehydrator. I <clears throat> had just a bit of water in it. Make sure you don't wanna leave any water in here. There are little pockets where the water will gather. If anything does spill, the idea is that it'll get caught in those little guys and won't leak out the air holes. But no sense making it more difficult for the dehydrator by leaving water in there. Okay, everything here has been sanitized, cleaned, and then wiped down with these Clorox wipes. I'm not doing a commercial, but something to this effect you wanna use just to keep all the bacteria away. Hands should be impeccably clean, everything should be Beautiful. Don't forget, you're not just cooking here, you're preserving. And this is gonna be, I'm gonna be eating this well into the spring months, maybe even into the summer. So the better I do this, the healthier I'll be. Bring on the beef. Our first tray, I'm gonna set up with a solid liner. This is what you use to make the uh, fruit roll up. So the, the, the fruit leathers, this will hold liquid. The idea is if anything were to spill out above it, it'll eventually at least stop here. It won't go into the waste. Because anything that touches down here, quite frankly, I, I don't throw, I don't keep. All right. Again, cleanliness, it's all about habits, keeping things tight. And the next one would be one of these clean screens, easy clean screens. Air flows through them. Uh, and every other one I'll rotate. So I've got them all set up right on the, the edge of the counter right over here. Okay, this is the pan that I browned the beef in. We've got one more task for it. I gave it a quick rinse that you see how nice it cleans up. I mean, it's not perfectly clean, but it's degreased. I'm gonna take the beef that I just cleaned and I'm gonna put it right back into this pan. And we're gonna dry it out a little bit. Might as well give the dehydrator a head start. The pan's already warm, so it's not that big of a deal to do. It's a lot of beef. It'll be a big batch. Very good. Give this a shake up. All right, get that puppy. My dog gets anything that I drop. We'll just give that a few minutes and then we'll move over to the hydrator and start loading her up. There's no real trick to doing this. I, I tend to spoon out equal portions on each tray, just like this. You don't want to overcrowd these trays. You can always come back and add more. So that's my basics. I know I'm gonna need a few more scoops. That was five scoops. Six. Honestly, your hands are your best tool, but this beef is very hot right now. So we're gonna let her cool down. Once it's on the dehydrated tray, you can work it. I'm gonna break up any small clumps. There shouldn't be too many at this point because you've been breaking them up all along. There's inevitably a couple. Now that may be a little light. If I have extra at the end, I can always go back and add more. I like this technique because it gives me a little bit more control. You know, just like with all things, I don't do this every week, so I don't have muscle memory or remember the exact best way to do it. So as I remember, I get more efficient. This is a trick I remembered just now. It works out really good. It's kind of like working like a, a piece of machinery, you know, a clamshell gives me a lot of control. Because you don't want to overdo this, you don't want to overload them, you don't want to be spilling, because this is precious stuff here. It's a lot of work goes into making this gravel. You don't want to be dropping it on the floor for Bella to eat, although she loved to eat it. I think this just about does this level. Okay, let's move on to the next one. As you can see, it's got one of the solid liners in it. This should dehydrate very quickly. I could already feel the moisture content is very low. Good quality beef. Good quality beef. That's probably enough, but I got some big old clump of roos here to get rid of. I'm gonna try to get as close to the edge without going over. 
Okay, next one. Okay, next one. This one wants. Now what happens with this, I'm going to dehydrate this beef at the proper temperature of about 160 degrees. It should take at least four to six hours to do. Now if I were to do that with vegetables in here with this beef, sauces, gravies, that kind of thing, the vegetables would over dry and they wouldn't rehydrate well. They'd be hard to digest, hard to eat, hard to chew. You got the idea? Looks like I'm gonna be using eight trays. I don't think I could fill up another tray, which is all right with me. What I'll do is I'll put these extra trays in as spacers. It makes the machine work more efficiently. Oh, looking good. Clumps, 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 clumps. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll bring you back an odd memory, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's give you a look at what we've been doing here. Hey, Bella. Here you go, girl. All right, all the trays are on the dehydrator. Here comes the power head. We're all plugged in. Okay. We've got all the ground beef loaded onto the dehydrator. The timer is set. All we have to do is wait now. We've got a couple hours to kill. I've got some work to do around the house. Getting ready for Christmas here. With our Nesco Garden Master, food dehydrator, and jerky maker, we're doing ground beef today. Hello, Anthony. You come for a visit. Good night. Good night. Okay, that's four hours. It's done perfectly. It's probably done in about three hours. It's perfect, so what I have to do is to put each one of these trays, I'm not trying to spill too much, into that. And that's what I'm gonna do. perfectly dry. That was originally three and a half pounds of ground beef. Well, that much gravel should get me through most of the winter. I'm gonna take the opportunity now to thank you for clicking on that button and watching the, the video. I hope you're learning and enjoying uh, these. These are just for entertainment purposes. You know, there's nothing too serious. It's something that I like to do. Um, this will be the basis of all my camping food for the next couple of months. Uh, it's important to me. I figured I'd share it. And most importantly, uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, I'd like to express my thanks and my gratitude for you being there and supporting the channel, watching my videos. Um, I take great pleasure in knowing that you're out there watching right now. 